Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Uh, today we're going to take a look at something that I've been wanting to take a look at for a little while. I've actually covered in a different video, but uh, I want to kind of continue the Raspberry Pi themed uh, series that we're doing here. And now that we've got a Raspberry Pi set up and we've got uh, traffic going to it via uh, via Nginx Proxy Manager and our domain names and our Cloudflare, and we're starting to put apps together on here. After a little while, it's going to be kind of hard to remember uh, where all of those different ports are and the addresses of all of the different applications that we're installing on our Raspberry Pi Docker server. So today we're going to take a look at installing a dashboard. And the dashboard I want to look at today is called Heimdall. So Heimdall is a very easy to use dashboard. I've used it kind of off and on for, uh, for about a year now. Um, and so I thought I would just take a quick look at that today. Uh, it's super easy to set up. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look. Uh, what we're going to do is actually take a look at the Linux server Heimdall. We can see that this was updated just two days ago. Um, so if we scroll down a little bit, uh, there's some good information here, uh, different places you can find the Linux server guys. Uh, and here we can get into the actual Heimdall specifics. Uh, here we can see that this will run on a desktop processor, the 8664 processors, as well as uh, it looks like basically all of the ARM architectures there. Uh, so that shouldn't be any issue at all to install this basically wherever you want to install it. So if we scroll down a little further, uh, there's this Docker compose file or uh, code right here, if you want to call it that. Uh, so we're just going to copy that. And I've actually already got it pasted over here. Now, I've, I've modified this. I want to do, I get it pre-installed to take a look at it uh, to make sure that everything was going to work the way I wanted it to, and it does. So uh, at the top, we've got our version 2.1, pretty standard. Service is Heimdall. The image, we can see that we're using the Linux server Heimdall image. The container name will be Heimdall. Seems logical. Uh, below that, we've got our PUID and PGID. Uh, those are user permissions or user groups uh, to uh, to basically pull in the permissions for that user group. If you're not sure uh, what your PUID and PGID are, let me show you how to do that real, real quick. Uh, what I'm going to do is open up uh, my uh, SolarWinds uh, putty uh, thing here, and I'm going to go to HAL, uh, just like I should here because that's our Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna log in as Pi. And uh, basically what I want to do is get uh, the ID of a specific user. And the user we're looking for is your Docker user. That's the user that we use, uh, that we log into Docker with. So I'm going to go over here to, uh, not to Docker, to uh, Open Media Vault. My apologies. We're looking for our Open Media Vault user. Uh, so I'm going to log into port 81 here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and log in. And right there, you can actually say I'm going to log in with admin. So basically what we're looking for is whatever username you use to log in. Chances are it's going to be admin. So that's what I used there. So what I'll do now that I'm logged in over here on Hal, I'm just going to type in ID space admin, hit enter. We can see my UID is 998. My GID is 100. Uh, and if we take a look at this portainer, UID or PUID uh, is 998. GID is 100. So that's good. Uh, your uh, time zone, I'm close to Denver. So I've got America slash Denver there. And then we've got our volumes here. And that's, uh, we can actually go back to uh, open Media Vault here. Find our shared folders. Uh, if we're not sure about what that looks like, uh, you should have been following along. This is, a, again, this is a, a video in a series. So in order to get to this point, you should have kind of followed along with some of the earlier videos. In one of those earlier videos, I set up this configuration folder right here, or this config folder. And right here is the absolute path. Now, if you don't see the absolute path uh, in this, what you can do is hover over any of these uh, uh, header, header columns up here um, and right just like that go to columns toggle absolute path on and there's that so what i'm going to do next is right click go to inspect uh, and then of course it opened in the wrong window but right here we can see srb dev disk by label files I'm just going to double click that copy it come back over to portainer and then i'm just going to paste that right in there of course it didn't change i've already done this once but then i appended it with slash heimdall so that all my configuration my application configurations go into their own separate folders. Uh, so after that, we're mapping that to the config folder inside the Heimdall application. Below that, we've got ports. Now, originally this was set up to run on port 80. Uh, that's not gonna work for us because we've already got Nginx Proxy Manager running on port 80. I also can't use 81 because that's how we accessed Open Media Vault. And we can't use port 82 because that's what I'm using to access my Nginx Proxy Manager uh, dashboard. So port 83 it is. So once we've got all of this looking the way we want it to look, 
all we've got to do is click on this blue button right here. Now look, mine says update the stack. Yours is probably going to say deploy the stack. Uh, whatever the case is, click the blue button right there. And then it's going to say deployment in, in progress. We're going to go ahead and click on the logs right here. And right here it says it's generating an app key. This may take a while on uh, slower systems. Now we're on a Raspberry Pi 4 here. Um, while it's a quad core and while it's probably got four or eight gigs of RAM, depending on what model you've got, uh, this could still take a while. Uh, if I remember right, it's like 60 to 90 seconds from my experience. So we're just gonna kind of let this hang out, do its thing. And then once it's generated everything, uh, down here at the bottom uh, in this little container area, it's gonna say something to the effect of like services.d is done or something like that. Once we're to that point, we can go back and uh, take a look at the container. A few moments later. Okay, so now we're seeing the services.d done. That's what we were looking for, uh, what I mentioned earlier. So now we're good to go there. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just click over here on containers. Uh, right here, it says Heimdall. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this 8380. Uh, if I click this, it's gonna kick me over to here. And right there is the application. But uh, I wanna backtrack for just a moment. If you click that and it takes you to an error page, it's probably because you don't have your endpoints set up. And in order to do that, what you wanna do is come over here, click on endpoints, uh, click on local, and then you can either put in like I've got hell.local or you can put in the IP address the the or the, the local network name, whatever you've got. Uh, go ahead and put that in right there under public IP. Click on uh, update the endpoint and then you should be able to go back over to, you know, any of your containers here and, um, and, and just go ahead and click on that and it should take you right over to there. So, so now we've got this. We want to add an application here first. Uh, so what we'll do, uh, just click that link, just, just that simply. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll say, uh, let's actually come back over to our portainer and see what we've got. Uh, we're not going to do Plex because we haven't talked about that yet. Uh, we've got RPI Monitor. Let's do that. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's do let's do Duplicati first. So what I want to do first, just real quick, is I want to come over here, right click that and click Copy Link Address. And then we'll come over here and we'll type in Dupe like that. And you can see it automatically started filling in that name. And the reason I like that is because when I click it, it automatically fills in a lot of this other stuff for us. Now you can you know, change your background color to whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, you can add tags to it. Uh, you can upload your own custom icon if you've got one, or if you're using a, an application that doesn't have one, you can upload your own icon here. The next thing we wanna do is put in the URL of where we want that to go, and we'll click save. Just like that. Uh, so there's a couple of different things you can do here. Um, you can pin an item to the dashboard by clicking this back and forth right here. Uh, we can look at this in uh, different uh, views. Uh, we can uh, check out our users. So you can actually set up multiple users for this. Let's say uh, let's say you've got kids, you want them to have their own dashboard that only links to certain things. Uh, you could create a user for them and it create their own dashboard there. Uh, if we come over here, we click the, uh, the little list right there. Uh, here we can see that it's got a list. It's actually got the URL. We can edit, we can delete, uh, or we can add. And that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, I'm going to type in Bitwarden. Oops. There it is. So we're going to click that like so. Again, it filled in black, but you can change this background. Uh, I'm just going to copy that so I can go back to it. But if you wanted to, you can color code your, or color code rather, your uh, your little wallpaper things here. We'll just leave that like it is. Uh, what I'll do, uh, I'll just paste that. Uh, oops, nope, cancel. Just going to paste that right there. But let's close this. Let's come back over here. Uh, to Bitwarden RS. Now here, here's an example of something that wouldn't that you wouldn't do, right? Because we, if you've got Bitwarden set up uh, to be remotely accessible, uh, you might, uh, let's see if I've actually got the URL in there. Environmental variables, I do not. Uh, so you would actually wanna type in, you know, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, actually this should be S, um, you know, PW dot, uh, dbtechdemo.com, something like that uh, is what you would type in for something that needs HTTP access that you want to access via uh, via Nginx proxy manager. So we can go ahead and do that. We can click save. Uh, I can tell you if I click that, it's not going to take me anywhere. Uh, but you can see here that we've got uh, that URL up there. So that's how we can do that. Uh, let's take another look here just real quick. Oh, let's, no, let's not do that. Let's, let, let, let's do Portainer just because, you know, it's Portainer. So we'll click on add. Uh, I'm going to type in Portainer like that. I'm just going to let it fill in the blanks. URL. Uh, we're just going to come over to here. We're going to right click. Um, 
but we want port 9000, not port 8000. Copy link address, gonna go ahead and paste that right in there. Click save. Um, but you get the idea of how to go in and add, um, oops, you get the idea of how to go in here and add different applications to your uh, dashboard here in order to make well, quick links to the things you wanna access the most. And that's what we're here for. So the next thing we wanna take a look at here real quick, like I said, when we're creating these, oops, we can, uh, we can make tags for them. Uh, we can sort them by tags if we want to do that. Uh, we can also take a look at the uh, the gears down here and we can see uh, what version we're on in case you need support, uh, what language uh, is English. We can change that if we want to. Uh, there are a few different languages in there that you can select from. Uh, some ways to contact support, donate, uh, background image. If you wanted to change your background image, you could absolutely do that by just going here and clicking up there. Oh, let's, let's go ahead and uh, whore out my stuff a little bit. Uh, we'll go to video assets and then we'll scroll down to here. Let's just do that and click save. Just like so. And now if we come back to our homepage like that, there's my wallpaper changed. So very, very intuitive dashboard to use. Uh, if you want to turn on a homepage search, you can. Um, and then you can just search for applications that you want to you want to find. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll come back over to here. Oh, this is actually a Google search. I apologize. I thought it was to refine this, uh, but we can type in like, well, let's look at Duplicati for DB Tech. Hey, look, there's my all my Duplicati videos. In fact, there's a bunch of content by me. <clears throat> so Heimdall is very, very easy to use. It's a great little uh, starter dashboard. There are lots and lots of dashboards out there. Uh, I actually use uh, something a little different on my home server. I use Dash Machine. Uh, it's come a long way since I first started using it. I'm on version 0 0.5, but it's come a long way. I like 0 0.5. It, it just does what it says it's going to do. And the other stuff is getting convoluted and very intense for my liking. So uh, that's why I wanted to show you Heimdall here, uh, just to show you that you can create your own dashboard to get easy access to all of your applications without remembering where everything is. So I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video, except for the big glaring thing here. And you're looking at me from a different perspective because I rearranged my makerspace a little bit uh, to make room for the uh, LotMax 3D printer that Lot LotMax was kind enough to send over for me to review. So that video is coming uh, probably the next week or so. I've done uh, quite a few prints so far that some of them turned out great. Some of them have not been great, uh, but keep an eye out for that video. If you want to be notified when content like what we watched today or what's coming up is coming out, let me know by clicking the subscribe button, maybe hit the notification bell. Uh, that would uh, let you know, hopefully, uh, when my content comes out. Um, but I think that kind of covers everything I wanted to cover here. Like I mentioned before, uh, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. You guys are amazing. Uh, if you want to become a patron, link in the description, check that out. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up from here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.